Hi everyone, Anthony B. Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Lemon Twigs album, Everything Harmony. This is a new full-length album from the Lemon Twigs, a band I've been aware of for a minute but never really did a full, deep, formal review on any of their projects up until now. I would typically enjoy a single of theirs here and there, get a kick out of the nostalgic camp they bring to the table, and then move on. But I was consistently impressed so much with every single in the lead up to this new album, I had to just dig in further and hear more. So I looked into them and was interested to find that the guys who spearhead the band Brian and Michael are brothers. And they're Italian. Italian brothers whose father was also a recording artist, uh, albeit not a mainstream one. So don't go all crazy with like the weird nepotism comments, okay? And they've been recording music together for years even as children, they have this banger from over a decade ago called a Trophy Girl, which is quite a trip. So it's kind of like the uh, Daddario boys were born into this in a way. And as the Lemon Twigs, they've been doing it for four full-length formal albums now. Once again, they are pulling from the past, but this time around, they're not focusing quite as much on the 60s pop, psych rock, and glam they've been known for as of late. Everything Harmony is more of a soft rock affair, and I'm not talking about the cool strains of the genre that the current day music intelligentsia has deemed uh, worthy of listening to, like Fleetwood Mac and Steely Dan. No, I'm talking about the kind of dramatic and overly sentimental types of soft rock that I think most people these days would rather ignore. So as a result, we're getting a little Eagles on here. We're getting a little Carpenters. We're getting a little mid-era Chicago. This record is a total time machine musically and not usually the kind of thing I go for, especially when the influences are so obvious. But like, damn if the songs on here aren't amazing and crafted so well, masterfully well, be it on tracks that ride the corny highs of lovesickness or surprisingly meta and topical tracks that are so showy and on the nose in a funny way, be that the title track where Brian and Mike lyrically are listing out all of these things that they like, hair when it's flowy, not laughing when something isn't funny, uh, everything being in harmony, stuff that goes together. There's almost an OCD level focus on stuff just making sense on this cut, which I think also manifests in the tumbling and angular repetitive melodies throughout the track that are odd but catchy. And of course, over these melodies, you have the vocals singing in very close harmony. There's also Every Day is the Worst Day of My Life, which is a big acoustic cut with skilled and dramatic guitar work, and topped over that is literally the phrase, every day is the worst day of my life, over and over and over with different vocal passages, uh, but it's never lyrically explained as to why things are so awful. It's just put out there, however, uh, the vocal performance is so passionate on the cut you just kind of believe it without further explanation. There are a few rockers on the record that are pretty fun as well, like Ghost Run Free, which features these fun and jangly guitars flirting with touches of hard rock and psych. There's a bright synth-backed chorus on the track, too, that feels so sunny and carefree. Whole thing sounds like the theme song to a 70s sitcom uh, where uh, three sorority sisters are raising a ghost child as they're trying to make it in the big city. Then the song In My Head is a groovy little pop rock cut with uh, some of the catchiest melodies I've heard this year. In my head, in my head. Such nimble lines throughout this track, and that's just one example of the many catchy licks here. Then What You Were Doing puts some John Lennon-esque vocals and Beatles harmonies over some riffs that have kind of a, you know, proto-punk and old-school power-pop feel to them. Not my favorite tune on the record, but an unlikely stylistic combo that goes down pretty easy. So these tracks are great, but I think it's truly the ballads that are this album's bread and butter, especially in the first leg. There's When Winter Comes Around, which is a great introductory cut to the record, kicks off with some wonderful and beautiful finger-pick guitar. It's very folky, it's topped with these spotlit and tender lead vocals, and endearing lyrics about the seasons changing, a leaf that returns in the fall that no one can recall when winter comes around. Plus, the powerful rush of instrumentation around the midpoint of the cut is heavenly. It's overwhelming, too. Like, it's the first track of the record. Brian, Michael, why are you doing this? I can't cry this early on the album, okay? 
Already off the bat, this record is scratching all the right theatrical itches, and that is done so again with the song Born to be Lonely, as well as Corner of My Eye, which is another fantastic highlight, where we hear more young, boyish, beautiful vocals over some very refined acoustics. Vibraphone, what sounds like vibraphone on the chorus as well. Okay, taste. It's just such a romantic vibe to the song, super cute lyrics. It's so heartwarming, it stings. Then there's Any Time of Day, which is a piano, rock, powerhouse, those pillowy harmonies, the intense key change toward the end, the boys are nailing it. Then there's also the powerful centerpiece of what happens to a heart. And this is like a sometimes when we touch level moment of melodrama. I love it. With lyrics like, now I know what happens to a heart when all it ever does is hurt. It wants a chance to step out of the dark, but ends up buried in the dirt. That with the strings and the horns firing off with it, it's just ugh. There are also a few somber cuts on the project that pale in comparison to others. Uh, they're not terrible by any means, and they certainly add to the variety of the record overall, but I'm not exactly burning to return to them when the record is off. Be that still, it's not enough or I Don't Belong to Me. But there is a pretty strong closer on the album, though, which reads like a surreal fantasy where you forget who you are and what the love is that you were engrossed in at one time, and then you're reminded by this person. At least that's how I'm reading it. There's something eerily beautiful about the instrumentation and the storytelling on the track, for sure. And I guess kind of works as a final moment on this project because it does deal a lot in memories, and much of what's going on here in terms of the vibe and aesthetics of this record is, is very much based in memory and the past. But yeah, I, I loved this damn Lemon Twigs album. I think they did a great job on it. Uh, there are really only a few songs I thought were just okay. Stylistically, it's it's kind of derivative. I, I will give it that. But it is executed so fantastically well, and the tunes and the songs and the performances are all there. I'm feeling a strong eight on this one. Transition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Lemon Twigs, forever.